So after yesterday's big success, I decided we're going to do sort of like a little bonus video, uh, give a bit more in-depth to the car, all that sort of stuff. I am going to do proper like a build breakdown like Hoonigan does, um, but currently I just haven't got the time before the drift day. It will come, hopefully we'll have some better bits on the car. But for now, we're, uh, we're just going to load up the tablet, we've got some settings to change in the ECU, so we're going to do that now. Obviously with it going from a 4 litre to a 4.4, all our fueling is going to be wrong. Um, luckily, thanks to Bailey Performance, who mapped the car so well, we can change one setting in the ECU, and then hopefully it should be alright. Um, I've got a bigger throttle body and stuff to go on, so we are going to take a trip down to them in the future anyway, but currently this, this is just going to have to do. There's a lot of talking in this video, so I'm going to pre-apologise. but. Trying to pull the loose ends now, getting ready for Buxton. There's not much left to do, so hopefully we'll cover it all in this video. Let's begin. So we're in Tuna Studio, as you can see this is my outdated dashboard, we're not boosted anymore, I haven't got time to make another one, I'll do it later, but for now we're going to go into basic and load settings, engine and sequential settings, up here we've got required fuel, so we're going to click that, that obviously says engine displacement 4 litres, we're not 4 litres anymore, so we're going to click in the little box, add the little keyboard, we're going to back all that out, and we're now going to go 4.5. 4 litres, I'm going to enter that, I'm going to click OK, OK, and then you see now that's changed to 8.4, obviously it's a bit bigger, we need more fuel, so now we're going to close this. Right, we're now sat in the car, plugged everything in, so we're going to turn that on, turn ignition on, this is hopefully going to boot up. And it's going to give us an error message to basically say the settings are all different. So what we're going to do is we're going to use send current tuner studio settings. And then now we should have much better fuel. Right, next problem. That clearly says 9% throttle. We're not on 9% throttle. So we need to come to uh, tools. It is calibrate TPS, throttle completely off, throttle completely down, accept that, and that'll do, that's close enough. So, wiring and ECU wise, it's the wiring loom was originally a normal M60 loom. Um, it's had a few sensors removed, like the cam sensor's not here anymore. There used to be an idle control valve there that we're not using anymore, so I stripped all the loom down and then wrapped it in this nice little fabric tape. Um, all the plugs and everything, all the sensors, everything is completely OEM. All the coil packs, I've got a coolant temp sensor down there, we've got intake air temp sensor here, crank sensor, and that's about it. Obviously a throttle sensor. Adding on from that, we've now got a MAP sensor instead of a MAF sensor. So that's a little vacuum line that runs into the car. And then under the dash where we've got some disgusting wiring, I have a K-Data ECU. It's plug and play to factory M60. It uses a MAP sensor, which is what that little guy is. Um, that needs connecting. But apart from that, it's all plug and play, and then there's a, a USB cable straight out the side of the K-Data, straight into the tablet, and I get on my dashboard functions. Just going to try my fans, see if they still work. Yeah, they, uh, they certainly work. So, because I'm an ingenious car builder, 
every time I take the rear bumper off, I have to take the tail lights out. That's nice, isn't it? Yes, let's, let's not do that. We'll make some brackets probably here. And I'll cable tie it in there. So I'm sure this is sat in there. I can still get here. But for now, we're doing stupid things. Cooling system wise, it's an SR20 Driftworks aluminium radiator. These are Transit Mark 7 fans. Uh, each on their own individual relay. Obviously, the battery's only there, so it's straight off the battery. There's my power, and then they're linked on the switch side, then run all the way up the car, obviously, to the dash switch. This used to be the overflow bottle, but it was just too small when we went to rear radiator. So effectively what happens is, as the coolant gets hot, there's a little valve in this cap that opens and lets pressure out these little lines here. Obviously that was then this line. It then fills this up with the excess and then when it cools down there's another valve in the cap that opens under vacuum and then there's a port on the bottom there. You used to pull the water back in. Now this bottle's not big enough to hold the amount of expansion that the system Creates and then Brian Williams from Judd Power basically said uh, the formula to know what size bottle you need. It worked out to me to be about three liters. So this is my trial. Um, I saw it on a post where David Goldstraw was struggling, so that was lucky for me that I stumbled across that. If that works, David, make me a bottle like this that fits there. That's three liters, please. Um, sort you some monies out and things. And we'll get that sorted. Twenty liter fuel cell that's got an adapter on the top that then goes obviously through the firewall to my little filler in the window you might not know but on a fuel cell you need to put some form of breather in because as the fuel comes out air wants to go in if there's no breather you create a vacuum in the tank and then the pump can't pull the fuel out you starve yourself and then knackers your engine it's not very nice it just won't run in the end inline pump there straight through the firewall, through the car, and then up to the front. Another thing to note on a bleeding system, make sure you've got a high point. If you haven't got a high point, that's where your air is going to sit. If you can't get it out, you get an airlock, it'll overheat immediately. So that's our high point at the back. And then down at the front, we have another high point. This little guy here. And then what I want to do in time is these are the radiator hoses that go to the factory heater matrix obviously i haven't got one so i want to link that and that together and in the middle about here have another one of those fillers um, and then have to run another smaller line along with these hoses to the back so obviously to the expansion bottle and um, that should make it almost a self-bleeding system so we shouldn't have any cooling issues that there normally goes to a catch can that's currently not here. We're venting to atmosphere at the minute. The engine doesn't breathe, so that's perfectly fine for a minute. Not scared about that. Final video of the day. All the front ends back on. We've got fluids. It makes a good noise. Let's have a listen, eh?